Hello and welcome to this episode of Open Social Media. Today I have the honor of having my friend Ray Hiltz teach us about Google Plus proper practices. There are not too many people on Google Plus that don't know you, but those who don't, let us know who you are and your okay, well, th thanks, Sherry, and, and, and hi, everybody on the panel. So, Ray Hiltz, uh, New Ray Com is my brand, and I've been on Google Plus uh, almost since it started. And what I do is for a living is I work with companies and entrepreneurs and other consultants and agencies on social strategy, uh, with especially in Google Plus, because I am so plussed about it. You're on Google Plus. Now what? The first thing you do, I mean, is, is like any other social platform. I mean, social media is a media. It's a line of communication. It's not an end in and of itself. There are reasons you use different platforms, and every time you decide which platform you want to use, make sure it's aligned with your business goals. Make sure your goals are smart. Make sure that they're specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And this is applicable also to social strategy. Why are you on Google Plus? Make sure that if it, the reasons you are on Google Plus are easily measured. It, whatever KPIs you want, whether it's a level of engagement, a number of people who circle you, um, lead conversions, you decide that, set them in place, make sure they're realistic, and then make sure you set a date. For instance, uh, before you start your, your Google Plus page, make sure you have some posts on there, make sure your profile is filled, and we'll go into those details a bit later. So Google Plus for me is the place to connect, collaborate, and build community because it's so content friendly and content marketing is so important everywhere, whether it's advertising, marketing, whatever company you're in, you have to push content. And Google Plus, because it's indexed by Google, is really great for providing you SEO juice to do that. So know why you're at Google Plus. Well, the SEO benefits is the one that I usually open the door with because people want to be found. And with authorship and content, Penguin, Panda, et cetera, et cetera, I'm not an SEO specialist, but I do know that more and more emphasis is based on the content and less so on the links. Social networking, you have access to your market. As a business page, you can circle anybody you want. You can leave comments. You can interact. You can engage with anyone you want. There is no edge rank, there are no barriers other than your good sense and your wisdom not to be spammy and to make sure you're, you're speaking as a human being and not as a, an advertising machine. Content marketing, again, Google Plus is a blog-like platform in the sense that you can format your blogs. There's really no limit in, in terms of how long you want to go. It's very image friendly and uh, as we'll see later, it's very keyword and SEO friendly. And the last reason, of course, was I told you so. Complete your profile. Hopefully, you won't look like Gloria you know, <laughs> Swanson, but it's very, very important that your profile is complete, not only because we want to know who you are, and no one's going to follow you if you have a blue head and you have nothing in your profile to let us know what you're interested in, but because, again, you won't be found if those keywords aren't there, if what you do is not there, what your interests are is not there. Uh, the, your photo here is actually a Google account photo and not your, is specific to Google Plus. It's it, that's the photo that follow that's the photo that follows you wherever you are uh, on the Google platform, whether it's YouTube, uh, Gmail, etc. So yeah, so you have to remember that Google treats Google uh, Plus profiles and pages just like websites. So whatever you put there, uh, make sure you optimize. This is a hover card. So when someone puts their mouse over your photo or your name, this shows up. And this information underneath the photo with the guy with the big smile it appears on your hover card. For instance, your tagline includes some personal profile and some business stuff as well. And there's other places on your about page that shows up. For instance, your occupation will, is the new Raycom Social Solutions. That shows up there as well. So just by looking at that card, if I got an indication that this guy was going to circle me, I could look at that and probably make enough of a judgment call to circle him back or not you'll see a lot of times that uh, that's blank, which is a big mistake, missed opportunity. Here's some other links here in terms of filling in your about. These all link to your digital outpost. Again, these are all links going back and forth, so they're all, again, SEO advantageous. Contributor is very, very, very important. We won't go into authorship in a lot of detail, other than this is verification, which means that wherever you put content on the web, Google basically verified that you are the author, 
and therefore you'll, you'll have your photo once you complete the verification process on your search results. Here's an example of a search result I did recently, how to set up Lower Third. Now I did an article on that a while ago, so I want to see what happens when I, when I did a search on it. And what happened was the first three results, the first one was my blog site, NewRay.com. The second was the developer of the Lower Third, that's Moritz. And the third one was a Google Plus posting I did of that post. And you'll see I have the snippet and the avatar on the last one. Google Plus, Google I should say, loves Google Plus. Well, they should. They're, they're one and the same. So it's all about authority. The things that you should know about Google Plus is that it's not how many people you know, it's who you know. It's not the amount of people who circle you, but who you interact with. And that's true across all the social platforms. You want to engage with other influencers, etc. That builds your authority in, in the eyes of Google. So the follower count doesn't count. And number the plus ones has about as much value as likes, which means really not much. It's it's an acknowledgement that someone saw your post and they fly by and give it a plus one. It doesn't mean that they you know loved it or whatever. But if they comment on it, great. If they share it, greater. That's where they get the KPI should be in terms of engagement. Mark Trapigan, if you haven't, if you don't circle him, do so. He's the authority authority. Um, he's SEO and all. He's he does some brilliant posts. He works at Verante as the digital outreach guy. Also writes for Windmill. But he's basically saying that you know Google Plus is not a great place to increase your SEO optimization. It's it's actually a great place to do it. To, to the, if you're doing an SEO, it should be part of your toolbox. Building networks and communities. This is a familiar look. This is my lunch hangout with my crew. There's Randy and there's Scott. <laughs> yeah, business is personal. Some people think it's a pain because you can't just schedule and throw links on it and stuff. And and some people love that. I like the the fact that when people post things on Google Plus, I have a sense that they're actually right there. That I can actually, if I comment at the time, I can actually engage with them. And also, it's, it's, it's not anonymous, which means that people that you see, the profiles that you see are real people. So it tends to be less spammy, although spam is, is, is coming in more and more, especially with the, um, the ability to, for pages to uh, follow anybody. I'm, I'm getting some of that myself. So relationships. The whole idea of building networks and going online and building community, of course, is building relationships. And relationships build trust, and people do business with people they trust. So every touch point on Google Plus, from this whole menu down, is an opportunity to build relationships. Here, I mean, the profile is your story, and again, content is about stories. Pages of your company's story, events is kind of a party conference room. That's where you kind of rent a space, have an event. Everybody gathers there. They share photos and, and, and the event, whether it's a hangout or a real life event. You can put it on your event page and take it outside. Again, take photos from wherever you are, share it on the event page so everybody has a place to go to. Knowledge exchange communities, amazing. I love communities. Uh, it was a bit crazy when it first started, but this is where you really focus uh, your circles and your lead generation. You find those places that share your interest and you get into some really uh, focused discussions. Hangouts, that's what we're doing today. The next best thing to being there, and I think if you speak with someone, you can see their face and their reactions. That's a, such a bonus to building a relationship. Explore. I don't go there a lot. It's, a, it's you know kind of a serendipity pool. It's kind of you don't want to follow the same circles all the time and go to the same communities all the time. Once in a while, I'll just I'll check out my my wall and see what the general stream is. And sometimes you'll find some really interesting stuff. So it's good. It tends to be a bit trending, and I'm finding it can be gamed a bit. Local is your storefront. If you had business places before, uh, you can bring in and merge all that with your Google Plus page. Again, you can only do that if it's actually a local location or a place. You can't do that if you're a service. And of course, the photos is your album. You'll see all kinds of photographers on Google Plus because it's so image friendly. So I'm going to give you some Google tips because you want some takeaways, right? So content, it's just like a blog but it's not yours. So there are some people here, some really big profile guys who decide to switch to Google Plus for their blog platform. I think that's a mistake. As Chris Brogan says, it's kind of like going into a hotel, spending thousands of dollars renovating it and redecorating it and then leaving on the weekend. It's just not your place. Don't spend and invest a lot of time here, although it, there's a, a lot of uh, advantages for that in terms of SEO and stuff. You want to send links back to your blog. Your blog is your identity on, on, online. 
take advantage of the formatting and editing. It makes your blog post look a lot better, but also adds to your SEO. So you have the bold italic and strike through. Use images. Here's a tip. When you're sharing a link or a post that you've seen, or even yours from your blog, grab the photo first, import the photo so it's nice and big and it anchors your post. Write a nice, bold, keyword-friendly heading, and then do a commentary on why you're sharing that and maybe a short summary with a, obviously a link for more information or whatever. Read the full post here with a short link to it. That's a nice Google Plus post. It grabs attention because the image shares a link to the original site, whether your site or someone else's, so they'll thank you. And it gives you a um, voice and not just a share a link. Here's an example. This is one I shared a while ago, and this is kind of what I try to do most. I don't always because I'm, sometimes I'm rushed and I do sometimes just share a link. But this is what I like to do, and that is I took the, the photo from uh, Laura, Laura Spencer, if you don't follow her, she writes a lot about freelancing. She's excellent. I don't know how she writes so much. I took her photo from her blog post. I uploaded it. I put a bold heading on top with a link to her blog post. Why? This is why I, uh, I shared it, and then I gave a short summary. If I had to criticize this, and I, I, don't, and I don't do this anymore, I, I would put breaks between those paragraphs because it's, it's one big block of text, and, and, and that's not a good thing. So we have a title tag, link, summary, cat photo for bonus points because everybody loves cat photos, right? Yeah, I thought so. Circles. Basically, it's your personal business CRM system. Don't be a circle slut. It's not about the amount of people that you know you circle or who circles you. That's not the point here. The point is the richness of your engagement, of the people that interact with you. And on a business side, obviously, it's lead generation. So uh, you know if you manage them properly, it's better to have just a few than, than cast your, your net uh, too wide. It's a very personal thing. It's like file organization. I mean, it's, it's up to you how you want to do this. I use it differently between my profile and my page. On my profile, I tend to follow groups of interest, like other social media people or people who are into the outdoors or fellow Montrealers or clubs that I belong to. On my page, it tends to be towards engagement. So if someone starts to follow me, then I'll put them inside of a, a very general engagement circle. And then if I notice that they share or, or plus one me fairly often, I move them up in the circle until they get to the triple A or the can't miss circle. And then you know you're a star. Share circles is a really nice feature in Google+. Plus. It's a way of taking, a, like, say, my can't miss circle and sharing it with people that I like and think that will have value from that. But I treat it like LinkedIn, meaning I do not share a circle and put people in that circle that I can't what vouch for. So I don't fill my circle with a whole bunch of people. Unfortunately, uh, people try to game the system here with that and share these circles like 500 people. And other people share them, and then they'll circle everybody in that circle in hopes of getting more. It's kind of a Twitter thing. It, it doesn't help you. Again, it's that whole numbers versus quality thing. Google Plus Communities. This is my Google Tips and Topics, uh, my subscriber community. It's a great feature, but it does take work. It's almost, it's a whole, it's, a, it's almost like its own social platform in and of itself. Tips, before you, before you create one, know what you're going to do with it, what level of privacy you want. You know, there's four. There's two privates and two publics. One private, not searchable. Uh, that means nobody can find it unless they're invited. The other private level is searchable, and someone, if they find it, can ask to join, but it's definitely the moderator's decision to let them or not. The public one, same thing. Public is searchable. Anyone can join. If you find it, you just jump in. The other public level is that everybody can find it, but a moderator has to allow you in. Build it around your passion, because it's going to take time to nurture. Like anything, this you know, social is a marathon and not a sprint. Make sure you fill the About section so that people know what the rules are and what the community is all about uh, so that they're not uh, just link dumping and being self-promotional. This is where good moderation is really, really important. And the bonus tip is make sure you list the topics because one advantage that communities has over groups is that you can search within a community based on topics, whether it's an introduction, a resource. For instance, in the tips and topics, we can talk about uh, there's a hangout topic, a discussion topic. Make sure those are up to date. And also, a nice addition just recently, I think it was this week, is that moderators, if someone put it in the wrong topic, they can change it. 
Google Hangouts, a lot to say about that. I mean, there's blogs and blogs written about Google Hangouts, but basically it comes down to be heard. Even though it's a video medium, the most important thing is that you're heard. Uh, be seen, don't sit in front of a window. Uh, people want to see your face, that's the whole point, right? And be you. I mean, be comfortable. Once you get all the technical stuff and you feel comfortable, be who you are, because that's what your differentiator is. I mean, that's your personality is what sets you apart from everybody and makes you rise and be seen. So you can read my blog post, The Basics of Enjoying Google Plus Hangouts, and I definitely recommend that anybody who's listening circle Ronnie Vincer, the Hangout helper. If you, He writes extensively on Hangout and YouTube. So that's it. This is my screenshot of my About page. That's where you can find me and all the information and all the links to other places that I exist at. And if you want more tips, go to my blog site at newray.com, fill in the subscribe button, and you're going to get a weekly Google Plus tip plus a link to my blog post, membership to my Google Plus tips and topics community, and an invitation to our weekly Google Plus Lunch Hangout. How's that for a pitch? All right. That's it, Sherry. Yeah, thank you very much. That was fantastic. It was a nice overview. And I want to vouch for Ray's weekly newsletter. I think I told you before that is is both informational and it's also very personal. It's like getting a letter from a friend. So, Okay, so anybody has any questions? Thanks. How do you balance time on Google Plus with other platforms that you're involved in as to quantity, as to prioritization, things like that? If, if Depending on how many platforms you're on, I mean, I, I definitely recommend that you don't spread yourself too thin. But Google Plus does need some attention. I would say you need probably through uh, at least an hour a day on Google Plus to do content, to leave comments. Um, I mean, it, you know... If you're doing a Facebook page and you have a lot of people who like you and, and a, a strong community there, you're going to pay more attention to your Facebook page. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's where your clients are. So you, know, you could do it proportionately and say, okay, well, if 20% of my clients on Google+, Plus, I'll spend 20% of the time, but it doesn't work that way because I think Google+, Plus, uh, needs more attention because you can't schedule, you can't automate schedules uh, or post as easily. And you do have to spend more time because there's so many levels. There's, you know, there's a post themselves. Uh, there's the communities. There's the circle management. It, I, it's a bit more time intensive. I guess the question is how do you decide how you spread yourself? How do you decide Google Plus is the place for your purposes? Oh, wow. I mean, that goes back to the strategy of what you want to do. If you're fairly new to social and say you're a small business, I recommend they go on Google Plus because if they're like a local place, Google Local is a real benefit for them because the people leave reviews because they searchable, uh, they're very searchable and they can interact with their clients on the same platform. Uh, also, the SEO, the SEO advantages are really, really strong. If you're a business that already have a good solid community and they're willing to go to Facebook, that's an advantage because people are more familiar with it, so the learning curve is a lot smaller. People won't be as intimidated going onto Facebook and following you there. So you have to decide, I think, based on who you think your clients are and where they are. So would you say that being on Google Plus is almost a necessity? Oh, I think so. Of course, I mean, I'm biased, but uh, I mean, it's like, yeah, if you're on the internet, I mean, there's no walls here, right? I mean, Facebook is is great for what it is and and I, I work on Facebook and I have clients on Facebook but it is a walled garden and, there, and, and there's a different rule so the choice for me is kind of being are you do you want to be in a walled garden or do you want to be out in the meadow I mean the internet is is global Google is global it still has over 60 percent of, of, of search and Google definitely is putting priorities like it or not on people who have Google Plus profiles a lot of people are treating Google Plus, much like a Facebook account where they're the memes and all that crap. And, and what I've seen with it, and the beauty of it is you can get into these groups, you can get into these circles where you're, you have a deeper dialogue with folks. And you can go into in-depth think tank type conversations where that does not exist on, on most of the other platforms. So I'd like you to kind of, from your perspective, if there's some rights, some wrongs, or or you know the the old guard of Google Plus, and it was more of an intellect type platform. It wasn't open to the social, but it seems to be more coming into mainstream. So, 
I think basically what I'm finding is that there was resistance to Google+, and I think a lot of that was the fact that we don't need another platform. But I see as people come on, like any platform, it takes a lot of investment. And if you're going to invest a lot of time, you want to enjoy your time there. And I'm sensing that people are sticking around Google+, Plus because they find it just a more enriching platform because there are no limitations. You can follow the greatest minds in the world and actually write on their post and comment and engage with them. That freedom is... is is I'm you know is, is nowhere else as far as learning you know treating it like a, a like Facebook or or Twitter that's just a, a learned thing I think that will change as people respond to that differently on Google Plus what you're saying about getting into deep discussions not not everybody wants to and that's why I mean that's why I don't think everybody has to be over Google Plus I mean people who Facebook is great and it's great for what it does and for me I treat Facebook as a social platform, a truly a social pl platform. For me, Google Plus is more serious. It's kind of like a the bastard child of LinkedIn and Twitter. Tw Twitter in the in the sense that you can follow anybody you want. You can you can control how you how you organize them. It's easier in Google Plus for sure. Uh, I can have circles of three people and have in, you know really deep discussions. I can put a list of my prospective clients in a community or a circle and exchange articles and answer their questions. I can monetize a community if I want to and say, listen, I'm going to have a hangout every week. Subscribe here and you can be part of that community and uh, engage with me through, through that way. There's, it's, the possibilities are, are endless on Google+. And I think because it's live and because of the, what I said earlier in terms of how you build your post you know, with a, a blog-like appearance, I think that all adds to the experience here. Now, general public is not jumping all over Google+, and they probably won't because they want to be social, and the place to be social really is on Facebook. It's kind of interest-based. Facebook is more social. Uh, someone had said that social is kind of your past, and this is more kind of like, I'm not going to say your future, but present and future. Uh, I, I kind of think in like, I think also in the same, like, it's like Facebook being your family party and, or a pub, you know, and, and, and Google+, Plus kind of being like a mall or a library where you, you don't know what exactly you're going to come across, but you're always going to learn something or maybe meet new people. One of the things that I see that stands out in Google Plus that is, that is missing compared to Facebook is that on Facebook when I comment on a post from a business page, or another friend's page, or when I like it, my friends get a report of my activity on their newsfeed. So it's a much better way of using that six degrees of, six degrees of separation power, but on Google+, Plus, you don't get that. So if we were going to compare the two, I think that aspect of Facebook is really, really powerful. Um, and also the fact that the whole world is there. Uh, first of all, I, um, Facebook, it's, it's, it's not a zero-sum game. I mean, it's a plus thing, pardon the pun. Facebook is Facebook, and it does what it does very well, and it's a social platform. So you, there's no reason for your family to come over on Google+. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I don't want an update. I don't want a timeline of what my friends are up to. I do that on Facebook. I don't want to see it on Google+. If someone comments on something on Google+, I get a notification because I've set my, my notifications for that. I can, if I leave a comment on something, I can choose to follow the, the whole comment stream or I can choose to mute it and not, and not follow it. I have control. So I don't see that as a, as a big advantage. Uh, as I say, they're different. I mean, all the things that you're saying basically are, are, are the social aspect of Facebook and that's, again, that's the strength of Facebook. But Facebook, I mean, is, is again, it's, it's, an enclosed, it's an enclosed environment whereas Google Plus is open. And Google Plus pages can circle and interact with anybody on Google. You can't do that on Facebook. You know, when I put a post on my Google Plus page, every one of, of the people that circled my page will see that post, unless they blocked it or, or whatever. You can't say that for Facebook. So in terms of business, I think that Google Plus has the advantage that way. I just want to get back to Rich. He was asking me if I found what I found in terms of generating new business. I mean, not surprisingly, uh, Rich, uh, all my leads pretty well have come from Google+, Plus, um, which is kind of bizarre because I looked at my, I don't do this, I mean, they're kind of like a closet clout gawker. 
Um, <laughs> but Clout says I get all this stuff from Twitter and 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 Facebook, and I'm I'm really there. So, but yeah, my leads come basically from from Google Plus, second by Twitter. Now, um, I have a few questions. You talked about set smart goals, and when you talk to business owners, obviously one of their goals is to get more business. It's basically they are using Google Plus as an advertising platform. Some of them just put down their phone number and say, if you need this and this in service, call me. Another one of them takes pictures of what they do during the day for their customers, and they say, another happy customer, another happy customer. What advice do you have for those business owners to more effectively use Google Plus? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe just get off it and pay attention to their to their business. You know, I mean, if that's what they think building relationships are, uh, then they're not going to succeed on any social platform. And that's not, you know, that's not just Google Plus. But if that's how they treat any platform, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, whatever. Good luck to them, you know. Again, the whole idea of a social platform is to network and build communities, and you have to be a human being to do that. I think Google Plus gives you all kinds of opportunities to show who you are, but if they don't, you know, what can I say? They just don't get it. They don't understand the social part, and it's not, again, it's not particular to Google Plus. They're probably doing the same thing on all the other platforms. But how is it? What is the road from showing people who you are until you can get? somebody signed up to your business how long does that take oh my god I mean it takes a while right I mean nurturing relationships takes a while it's a it's a it's, it's a long-term investment how do you you know I don't know it's it's like real life I don't see what the 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 puzzlement here is if someone goes to a, a conference or goes to a chamber of commerce meeting it's the same thing you gotta find a commonality with the person Open up a conversation, break the ice, get to know the person, get to feel that okay, he's not a you know he's not a crook, he's not going to you know stab me in the back. Oh yeah, I got two kids who play baseball too. You know that builds a kind of a repartee, a trust, an intimacy. You take that to another level, then he's going to say, well, what do you do? Oh yeah, well I sell these cars. You know, I it's, I have this kind of you know brand, whatever. Oh really? Oh that's kind of cool. We were kind of in the you know in the mood for buying a new car because you know. Whatever. I mean, you you have to start by being a person. You have to start by being, you know, a a a face. People hate advertising. I mean, that we 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 have become so it's become so intrinsic, so ubiquitous to see advertising. And what social media has done is thrown that on its head. You know, people on the street are on their mobiles. They're leading the revolution, as it were. Uh, and and companies and brands are so back. You know, they're back in the sort of post-war. Mad Men era, where advertising basically told consumers what they want, you know, what they need, and now consumers are saying, you know, they're talking amongst themselves and they're talking about brands and they're talking about you and they're talking about their own personal needs, and we have the opportunity to listen to that. So if companies don't get that, they either have to do some okay, studying so let's or say, let's say you're a business, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I think Rich has a follow-up question. Um, so he says, are those leads asking for help with G Plus only, or are they in need of a wider range of support? Ah, that's a good question. Obviously, I'm getting a lot of Google Plus requests to do webinars and, and talks and consultations. I would say probably the majority of Google Plus specific. Where do you think Google uh, Plus is going to, in, in Hangouts and whatnot, are going to end up? Is it going to be the tide of history and it's inevitable that it's going to be a certain place? And then my other question that's related is, is there a, click, a ticking clock? In other words, it's the wild, wild west. Right now everything is kind of fluid and, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, maneuverability. Is it going to kind of settle in and if you don't get on the bandwagon soon enough, you're going to lose your place on the territory or in the corner that's kind of a prime corner? Well, I think businesses have an advantage. I mean, if they get on board now, they're going to be early adopters still, even though we're a year and a half or almost two years into it. And there is an advantage of, of being having real estate on the on the platform at the beginning because it because it is a long term thing. The whole investment in social media is long term. So if you're there earlier, by the time everybody catches up, you're already well established. So that is definitely an advantage. Uh, I don't know if, if it's going to be. I think it'll always be a um, alternative because again, it's it's not social in a strictest sense for me it's kind of like the evolution like a, a, a natural evolution of what's of social because it's so integrated into business apps 
that uh, is, we're not talking about platform just for networking and all that. You can do that, but you can also do business on Google+. You can collaborate. Uh, you can, I do that a lot. I mean, day, it's not a day go by that I don't have a meeting on Google+, and we collaborate on, on Google Drive Docs and, you know, check project management, that kind of stuff. It's a very business kind of platform, so it's a bit different. We're not, you know, it's, it's apples and oranges a bit with the other social stuff. So I think the social media... There, you know, everybody here probably is, you know, kind of maybe tired of hearing about it. I get that sense from people I talk to, oh, please, not social media. But the guy on the street, it's still new. And, you know, we have an obligation to to tell them that this opportunity it exists for you. So I don't know. I, I think that Google Plus will always be there. I think it's it's integrated into Google Apps. And I think as as it in integrates into Google, into actual business applications, social will do that as well. In the culture as a whole, and won't be separate. We won't be talking about social media, like we don't always talk about the phone. You know, I, I think it's going to be basically intrinsic to the way you do business, and I think Google Plus has a head start on that because it's already integrated into into business. Ray, I have. Uh, if you could give us a little overview, let's say you're a new business owner and you started, you set up a business page for yourself on Google Plus. Um, give us some few steps that you would go through to go from start until uh, circling the right people, finding a lead, and setting up an interview. What would the steps be? Wow. You want this for free, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, quick note, quick note version, man. Quick note version. <laughs> and that, that's the story you want more, come see me at newreg.com. <laughs> yeah. um, wow. Um, and Rich wants to know how to close a lead. It says, <laughs> how do you prove the ROI of G+. Everyone wants to know the payoff of time, money, and resources. How do you position this? How to close a lead, Ray? <sighs> Okay. Um, well, first, you know, it goes back to the strategy. First of all, what's your, what's your KBI? How do you measure your ROI on that? If we're talking leads, it's gonna, you know, it's a long haul. I mean, as I say, the the big advantage for Google Plus is the exposure you have and the uh, findable, you know, in SEO and stuff. So if I was a new business, obviously open up a page, I'd populate it with a fair amount of post at first, good content that's specific to your product or your service, but not necessarily about you. I would probably do a search, again, depending on whether you're a local business or you, you do business digitally, for people that share that same interest, whether it's, again, in your product or service. I would do that by find people on Circle, uh, Google Circle, which is a site. I would probably go into communities because that's where the um, they're more focused. Okay, say I was in say I was in granite importation. I would go into probably a, a real estate community, builders, contractors, whatever. See if there's questions being submitted. Offer answers to those questions. Introduce yourself. Put a name to yourself. Don't just put the logo on and build up a relationship that way. While you're doing that, spread your net further and do further searches uh, in terms of location, uh, where you want to do business, identify who your market is, offer your services by s linking your post to your blog site or to your website. Um, again, it's just, again, it's nurturing, nurturing that kind of network. For me, in terms of leads and, and, and closing a lead, I, I tend to go through the post, comment, Establish a relationship. They they go higher in my sort of circle funnel. Uh, at that point, I maybe direct a post directly to them, which means I don't share it publicly, but to them directly. So it's like an email. Eventually, uh, well, it's an example that happened recently. Um, I had done a, a post about Hangouts a while ago. This person commented on it. I thanked her for the comment. And after a while, we start talking, and she asked some questions about Hangouts. And I suggested we do a hangout for her to actually be able to use it. And she represents a company, a service company. Uh, actually, it's in Australia. So 
So I it was quite late. Uh, so, so I uh, so we did a hangout, walked her through. It's just well, listen, we do these webinars for for our company on a regular basis, and and no one knows anything about Google Plus. So could you? And I said, of course. Um, and we closed it basically. I mean, there was a contract that was sent, and 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 so there, that was done. But again, it's a long, and that was a short one. But usually it's, it's much longer. My I started on Google Plus in. First of July 2011, and my I'd say my leads didn't happen really until mid fall. So that's that's over a year. Yeah, it takes time. The the mm -hmm. lesson is takes time. So be patient, and really the focus is on building relationships. Someone had a question. I want just uh, I think it was Joseph. So he basically said I had he. That I had said that I have a family circle. Do I run both personal and business page? Um, one of the things that attracted me to Google Plus was that I had a big problem with Facebook managing my personal and my business one because you're kind of uh, even though I don't have a lot of friends on Facebook because I'm very picky, uh, but I it gets messy. Oh, I feel special. <laughs> <laughs> it gets messy because I don't like to it, to include peers in my family and friends thing but when they ask you kind of feel like oh you're going to like piss somebody off if you don't accept right so i i um it was hard to manage that on google plus i can do that very 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 easy by circles right i can send stuff by circles and business so before we even had business pages and and communities i was able to manage both those sides now i have to say that <laughs> I didn't have many friends on Google Plus, so it wasn't a real big issue. <laughs> so, or family, you know. I, yeah. Randy, you had mentioned before as well. I mean, Facebook ultimately was not designed to be an advertising platform. It is now a media, a media company, but I think the advertising is probably the the one bug that everybody has a problem with with Facebook because they're paying more and more attention to advertising, especially since they've been public. <clears throat> but there are four platforms that are going to be here, I, I think, to stay. I mean, I say that. You know, with the MySpace ghost not that far behind, but I mean, you know, you know there's going to be Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Those are your kind of four pillars uh, that you know, as any business, you have to have some sort of platform on. And I'm not counting blogs, because I would say that's the fifth. That's just kind of the sun where all these sh should be orbiting around. So I think people have to pay attention. I think what the problem is is that we sold social media at the beginning as a very easy thing to do and cost effective. And the point problem is for most companies, they have to hire someone. They need a coach, a manager, whatever. They can't do it themselves. So it's up to those coaches, consultants, etc., to say, hey, this is a situation where I could use uh, Instagram on this particular campaign, much like a you know advertising campaign, but it's where social and advertisements kind of go together. The the actual platform, the advertising platform, exists on someone's social space. That's the difference, and, and companies that do it well understand that, and they let the client and the consumer run with it. They provide the platform, they provide the resources, and say, "Hey, go take some photos, you know, and, and dump them on our site, and it'll be kind of fun. We'll have a whole talk about it and stuff, and a conversation about it." They're using it wisely that way. The ones who don't get it, said, as you said earlier, Ray, people don't like advertising because they don't like to be sold. That's the old adage. That's true. The, the, the shift in doing what you just explained is they're still being sold to because they're building an affinity with that brand that's allowing them for whatever reason a vanity uh, I, I got I got my picture put up by Dunkin Donuts or whatever it is you get you build an affinity audience out there yeah but that's a, I mean it's a, it, it's advertising yes is it as disruptive advertising is it like spots and banners popping up no because right. there's no engagement in those this is at least engaging you are, right. you know, and, and, and people do some, you know, want to, it's a vanity thing. They want to see their photo on someone else's site. If I'm on Campbell's Soup's site with my photo, but that's, that's been the case since the 40s, right? They used to have sure. those campaigns Absolutely. back in the 40s. So it's basically advertising. But what platform? For me, I mean, I think the, I'm not sure how far we are in the program, sure, but I mean, I think Google Plus is, is a serious more business platform in the sense that, for the buck, if you're going to invest in something, again, you want to be found. The adage that there's nobody here is such a is, please. I mean, yes, there's a billion people on Facebook, but do you know all those people individually? Are you able to reach all those people individually? 
it's what's more important are the people that you can reach. And with the Google Plus, people can find you, and you can do that because there's no barriers to you reaching out to anybody on any uh, on any channel inside Google Plus or on the internet. Because people can reach me even if they're not on Google Plus by by doing a search for one of my Google Plus articles, and if it pops up, they can comment on that. They can reach me even if they're not on the platform. The world is my oyster. If you're not on G Plus sharing that blog post, then you're lo you're losing out with some search engine juice. Is that not correct, right? Oh, I mean, I have examples. I mean, I, I can tell you, even though you know a blog is doing better, thank you very much. Um, when I post it on when I post it on Google Plus, it takes off, and it takes off both in searches, you know, and through Twitter. I can see all the lines on my mm -hmm. Google Analytics where they come from. And Google Plus is the is the top reference uh, source point for for my for my blog post and my writing. That so, just that justifies the cost to any business right there. Certainly. I mean, I would say, how do you justify Facebook? I mean, there are well, enough correct. studies that say the the conversion rates on Facebook aren't that great. But if conversion is not your primary, you know, KPI, then uh, you say, okay, well, whatever you set out as your uh, goal on Facebook. If it's amount of likes or engagement, you know it's the same thing applies to Google Plus. I mean, you you have to set out your own definitions of what success are before you can justify it. Because I I think the discussion with respect to cost benefit analysis. I mean, to be able to justify it, a lot of times you can justify it by showing that it costs less to do something. And a lot of the benefit that social media brings, I think, can be classified under saving time and money to get a particular thing done, as opposed to traditional marketing. There's so many var variables, really. I mean, I, I know of a, of, a, of a store here, an entrepreneur who does very well with Facebook, because that person has built up a real strong community. She does very well. So I mean, and she's not going to succeed probably in Google+. Plus. It's not her kind of community because she deals with artifacts and that kind of thing, and it's very tangible. And there's a whole mummy blogger kind of community built around it, and you know, uh, it's it's very Facebooky. So again, you have to look at I think at the industry that you're that you're talking about, or the kind of business that you're talking about. By all means, go to my blog site and subscribe for the tips because you don't only get the tips; you get to be part of our community. Mm -hmm.